All right, this is the land man. This is the rain from Spain falling on the plane. I watched an interesting video this morning. There's not really much on YouTube, but now and then you find something at least that stimulates your thought. It was a young man and his wife or partner pregnant with his second child trying to inaugurate um, and introduce a new YouTube channel, beginning with a video where he has her trying to shoot him with a Desert Eagle 50 caliber handgun with nothing but a book between him and the gun. And the girlfriend's last words is, I can't, I can't. And eventually she pulls the trigger and kills her, the father of her second child. I don't know, I thought it was a good idea. It could have worked if you used one of my books. Here, question. Here's one of my uh, 40 books. So it's fairly thick, as you can see. It's a nice little tank. 50 caliber gun could still go through that, actually, but at least he would stand a better chance than the pansy ass little book that he used. What's that called? Uh, Principia Galactica, first anthology of poetry. My first, first couple novels are in there. Small novels. Oh, just a random page. Always. They each of the human beings tuned their minds the way a bird might flap its wings in a seeming endless space of air. Always, forever, alive. These were the words of premonitions vast. Image, inside, opening, wide ever, ever, ever opening wide, a sea into a sea, time the faintest shimmer of eternity, a dream, a being, light for the sun of life, the cycles of life playing in the sun so silent and so equally indescribably expressed everywhere, forever, blending into the perfect image, the perfect soul of itself, God, blending into the image of all and powered by an aspiration as familiar, realizing, realized. Such were the rhythms of their breathing, of their heart. Such was the nature that had brought their minds together as one fountain of celestial radiance poured through them each from the invisible reaches of the universe of earth, married to them as they themselves were married to each other. What the fuck is that talking about? It's a really good doorstop. I think that everywhere that our mind can think and imagine, when it is given the sanctity to do so, the peace to do so, or even the peace to the agony that we need to draw from in order to draw out the voice of our nature, then we improve everything that we have control of in terms of thinking and feeling and sensing. We become more aware of our environment, which is a magical statement really, to be aware of your environment.
Leaves are not a commodity. Nobody buys and sells them. Nobody can find a way to put a monetary value on it. Just like these. What man-made structure, finding itself bereft of the natural wonder wherein it stands, the miracle of seed and cloud, of sun and sky, of tree and stone, and air of moon and star, could yet remain a beauty to behold. The seed of youth and all of our happiness expressed so beautifully in all the passing nature of ourself, could yet remain the sun's inviolate rose. Every ever-passing sanctuary of visible life, passing into the horizon of eternity, rising from the same in a garden of cosmic flowers. That was from chapter three of Paradise, uh, my second novel. Oh, no, that was from Susanna. Sorry, my first novel. We can apply, man has found a way to apply regimented environments, so an environment built up of a regimen, punctuated with hours in which information and training is poured into someone who is sufficiently motivated or sufficiently determined to go through the process of training required. In, in this way, doctors and car mechanics and so forth can learn to do intricate, make int intricate physical changes to our bodies or a car and things like that. But of all the meaning that can be made, only some of it goes to making physical things. Or things uh, whose distribution can be rewarded with monetary currency. It's a very small percentage of the meaning that can be made, or the things... That's the slipperiest fucking little... Torch, I ever seen. I don't think that works anymore. Um, it's a very small. It doesn't work. Come on, baby. Baby. Oh, there we go. Oh. That's, oh, oh, God, it's a supernova. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that spiritual people love to lie? Here's a good example. It'll be okay, honey.
doesn't always apply. I was watching a video this morning about how many people were killed and they underestimated uh, the number of people in China at 20 million, but in fact it's around 40 million. World War II. Body count. Probably not that accurate, given that they were 20 million off for China. We did that 70 years ago? Yeah, it's coming up on an anniversary. We've had our, we have our 75th anniversary of the greatest, amazing, most religious human sacrifice we ever had. We should all be quite proud of that. Keep it going, everyone. Maybe we can get World War III and get more people to sacrifice themselves. Maybe we'll just have to expand the counting system to include the people that die from alcoholism, the people who languish in mental illness because of family neglect, because of the indescribably resolute lapses in all of the kindness, peace, education, and medicine of civilization. The little lapses in democracy, which is basically just a lie to cover up the cultivation and distribution of drugs all over the world owned by the CIA. It's hard to believe that people think there's any peace in the world at all. You send a child into the world and you say, oh look, there's things called good and there's things that are bad. What's good or bad? What's good? What is good about the world? What is absolutely good? What is absolutely good about planet Earth today? What is absolutely good about human society? What's absolutely good about it? What can you depend upon to be good all the time about society? What always works perfectly? Nothing. Is it automatically good to be born in a white, upper middle class family in North America? Is that good? Do you want to spin a roulette wheel? And by some fluke of luck, you'll land in some upper middle class white family in the Northern Hemisphere? Is that guaranteed to be good? What are your chances? We'll go down the list of things you might encounter. It might be a family that promotes a religion, in which case your brain will never develop. It might be a family with incest, in which case your brain will never develop. It might be a family with drug or alcohol addiction, in which case your brain will never develop. It could be a family uh, involved in the mafia or crime or some form of warfare, in which case your brain won't develop. It could be a family that takes no, no evident interest of allowing you to be yourself for the rest of your life, in which case your brain will never develop. I'm not scared about dying. I'm scared about fucking coming back. You ever noticed that if you pick any political YouTube channel, and if you look at all the videos they made over the last year, that they absolutely have nothing to fucking do with life whatsoever? They'll have some sort of weird-looking tranny on their show, but they'll never look at transgenderism as a global culture that goes back tens of thousands of years. It's in the Bible, it's in the Koran, it's in everything. So that women should want to be men, and men should want to be women. Isn't that kind of buried in Freud, who was a woman? Tricky, isn't it? Right? Uh, Eve is made by from Adam's rib. You take a rib away from a man, he's one step closer to being what? A woman. It's all very tricky. The people who write these things are very smart. You have to develop a completely different brain function to understand how you're being tricked and cursed every day.
curse for curse. Modern propaganda is nothing compared to ancient religion. And you think fucking some, some guy cutting off his fucking testicles or some, some woman cutting off her tits is a problem? That's nothing. We have a, a village tranny here in Parksville. I was friends with them for about a year. They're a narcissistic sociopath. All they do is, in the evening, is, is spend time watching online casinos and tranny porn. And they just go through paperback novels, just like most people who have nothing else to do. And no actual mental development. When I first met it, it told me at 160 IQ, smokes three joints a day. In all fairness to any viewers out there, three joints a day? That's a lot of fucking marijuana, man. I mean, I, I haven't been smoking that long, but I've been smoking for a year, and I'm lucky if I get through one joint in a day. And that's like walking eight, ten hours around. I can have a little more or less depending on what kind of day I'm having, but or what quality of weed I'm smoking and so forth. But. And they have no friends. And I know one other sociopath, and they're the only person they ever hang out with. Mm. And I, I've known them both individually, and neither one of them likes each other because they're so, because they're narcissists. <laughs> it was so fun hanging out with them. The rare occasion when Louise, this re, this uh, this elderly uh, French Canadian narcissistic sociopath, and Robbie, this um, Dutch immigrant uh, tranny narcissistic sociopath, <laughs> in the same room, and constantly competing to make the entire conversation about themselves. Oh my god. Uh. For instance, look at that. Do you think that those are all men? Two and a half men. Do you know what two men means? It's where the word woman comes from. Two men. That's where the word woman comes from. Two men. These are mostly women. Again, tricky. Watch Two and a Half Men. I've watched and rewatched all of this series, and there's so many references to transgenderism all the time. It's, it's very well done. At one point, the main character, Charlie, refers to watching a documentary about three generations of transvestite kabuki dancers. Families. Right? It runs through families, it runs back forever. It's weird, and you never hear about it. You never hear about the religion, and you're not going to hear about it. But generally speaking, it's where all the other religions come from. And the main, one of the main premises is that being born with genitals is the original sin. My, I suspect that it's an old form of mental warfare and a way to train soldiers. A way to train soldiers a way to attack people, a way to subvert uh, the natural society of man. It's, a, it's an age-old perversion, is transgenderism, an age-old perversion. And the local boy or girl who decides to cut off their genitals, that's, not, that's, that's an illness, but that's nothing. It's a drop in the fucking bucket. It gives us some indication of how, what's happening in the mind of everyone. Even if you don't get to the point of chopping off your genitals, how many people have suicidal thoughts? How many people tend to participate in society in a way that amounts to a glorified means of suicide? We're not looking out enough for ourselves. If you look at even all the most popular YouTube channels, where's the content? We're not looking out for ourselves. We're not noticing our environments. We're not building an environmentally aware brain. We're not accounting in a ther strongly therapeutic way for all the types of impediments to the development of our minds and all of the ever-swelling biblical seas of sacrificial scales of, of, of evidence 
that there has been a serious impediment to the development of our minds, in so much as we would attribute to any man, woman, or child a reasonable awareness of their environment and the capacity to improve their ability to extract safety and wealth from their environment. Vives? We didn't go to space. <laughs> That's not what, what space looks like. And the stars aren't out there. It's all in the Earth's atmosphere. And beyond that, counter space. The whole, what we call the universe, is like the belly of a mother, and there's all this life going on inside of it. It's electrical, it's alive. It's conductive. It's able to build flesh that conducts the spontaneous and the cosmic, planetary, personal and collective discharge of energy and of life. The conducting of life. It conducts life. The whole universe conducts life. The whole universe is a life conductor. A conductor of life. It's conducting all of it. And it builds up flesh that can conduct it. And it sloughs off that flesh. And it incorporates the old flesh. And it conceives of new flesh. And when we talk about the sun rising, we're talking about the conception of new flesh. And when we talk about the clouds moving, we're talking about the conception of new flesh. And we talk about the plants growing, we're talking about the conception of new flesh and the nourishing of new flesh everywhere in the universe of the planet of the Earth. The solar system is a conductor of life. And the sun and the planets move around us. And the stars move around us. They're moving around us constantly. And our mind, at an etheric level, is moving with them. That's what's happening to our mind. Now, I just realized I probably just made the stupidest YouTube clip that, that ever exists. And that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> but... I'm talking about how our mind works. I'm talking about our environment as it's moving around us all the time. In our mind and aspects of our mind are moving around. And it's all conducting life. And you can move your mind in any direction and you can build flesh in your life. And what happens when people get cancer right, is there's an interruption in the conduction of life. In other words, by the time you actually get cancer, there's been an interruption for a very long time in the conduction of life, introduced with categorical corruptions of what life is in ways that drastically impede our ability to take advantage of all the nourishment that the whole conduction of life provides for all of the building flesh of life. And so you could see the root of a carcinogenic or carcinoma and a carcinomic society in how we see the universe in so much as we do not see the conduction of life and we do not see the nourishment of life in everything that moves through our mind and even as our mind moves like a, an ether around us and there's a still point where Just going from not moving to moving. And that part of our mind survives death. At which point, the waters of the conductivity of our life no longer require the flesh that is mitigating 
for a certain conduction of life, a conduction of the forces that exist between one dimension and another, or one kind of space and another. Right? The fact that we die tells us that we're not, we're not just in a physical space, that death in and of itself is a portal to the other space that our, our lives are conducting with. And so death is always present with us. Death is actually an integral component of life in so much as the flesh that is conducted by life is always suspended between or emerges from the intersection of one dimension and another, a doorway, a doorway of our thoughts, a doorway of our words, a mouth, right, which is just a vagina on its side, a visica piscus here. Visica piscus, right here. Here, visica piscus. Here, visica piscus. Right? Building new flesh, discharging flesh, being nourished, having lots of vital exchanges with the environment. Right? You can't see my breath, but it is of a critical level of exchange with my air supply and with the entire environment, the whole circulation, the breathing of the life of the entire earth, just in my breath. What kind of words can, can that breath produce in such a harmony of life? And it's so abstract, what I'm talking about, it can get very boring. boring. That's because it is <laughs> made in China. People are so easily controlled. They could move all manufacturing from their own countries to a totally other country, communist country, having passed through World War One and Two and the Cold War and nobody nobody bats an eye. Because everybody's lying all the time. Nothing means anything. Peace doesn't mean anything. Countries don't mean anything. Country sovereignty doesn't mean anything. Democracy doesn't mean anything. Working for a living doesn't mean anything. Saving money doesn't mean anything. And nothing means anything in our society. It doesn't mean anything. And it's 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 artifacts like a like flesh in the wrong place that prevents other things from being fleshed out that are healthier and actively attempts to destroy or digest the flesh that is growing in any other direction but that dictated by society i can't i can't tell you the amount of pressure i faced growing up because i didn't want to work because i didn't want to participate in a death cult And people will study all things their whole life. You know, they'll never, ever... Imagine if you went your whole life not hearing the phrase, the entire world and its cultures is little more than a death cult that chokes out as much of the conductivity of life and all of the living images that constitute the sanctuary worthy of the life of man and the life of man indeed critical as are the exchanges of oxygen uh, through our own, through the portal of our own mouths. Critical is the exchange of information light and, uh, and other people's forms of expression through our eyes, critical as the syncopation of what we take in here with what we take in here, with what we take in here, with all of the different hot and cold electrical signals going through our skin and the pain signals in our body and the pressure, if not of physical space bearing down on us, but pressures of demands made upon us. Pressures of things that we're told that we better do or else. It creates a gravity. And, and under that pressure, the body can start building different kinds of flesh in order to assimilate that pressure. And our bodies and our minds and our lives grow to deal with the pressure that the world places on us. And if the world can do, produce a, plesh, a pressure, it can become a new kind of gravity. Isn't it? The world is like gravity. It pushes us into the grave. It's very grave.
isn't it? The world is extremely grave. All you have to do is see all the graves we produced with World War II. For the na in the name of a religion, which is also a business, a religious business of human sacrifice. That's what World War I and II were. That's what Vietnam was. How many people do you know who have family members, who, of people, boys usually, who put on uniforms, whose entire purpose was to conduct magical symbols into places that were picked for their locations on the, earth, on the earth in an energetic way to sacrifice the corpse that would one day lay within it. <laughs> right? Babylon. People occupying tombs, like Pharaoh's tombs, called your name in all capital letters. Walking around, giving your life to a dead body which is all the world thinks of you. The dead body uses this. The dead body. It could be like a Silence of the Lamb part two. The dead body gets money. The dead body holds a flashlight. Oh, the dead body makes a YouTube video. And the dead body goes to work every day. And the dead body worships the gods of the world. And the dead body tries to be peaceful and happy. And the dead body is a good person. And the dead body loves their mommy and daddy. And the dead body is a part of almost every sentence people think, say, or read, or hear their entire lives. is the dead body, the fraud of man. Man is a fraud. Man loves to lie. Not just Christians. Everybody loves to lie. They lie to themselves. They lie to everyone around them. It's an amazing lying system. Right? They call. They say... I'm looking for Rain Griffin. I say, yes, I just lied. You say, how's that possible? The Rain Griffin they're looking for is not the Rain Griffin in here. It's the Rain Griffin that lives around your body and takes and eats like a succubus your entire life. It makes all kinds of demands upon you. All of your training in society lives inside the person, the fraud, that uses your name. You're living inside a shell that is committing identity theft in your name, and you're giving it your eyes, your life, your mouth, your cock, your semen, your ovum, your belly, your womb, your industry, all of your beliefs, everything you do for your home, all the energy you give to your children, everything you do to construct life and make steel and make cars, we give to the fraud of man. We give to an identity thief that then does things on behalf of the man that we have supplied all of our energy to. And with all these people committing these frauds, is it any wonder that we manage to live in a world that's disgusting as this? We're going to save the world with environmentalism. We're going to stop with global warming. We're going to do this. We're going to work harder. We're going to pay our bills. We're going to accept all the different sexual deviations of people's bodies. We, we do everything we're supposed to do. We do everything we're told to do. We believe in the Canada arm. We believe in space. We believe that the universe is constructed the way people tell us. We believe that the whole business of lying to people only happened a long time ago and they just they curb their habits the thirst for control and lying the the war the barbarism the mass human sacrifice oh it just seems like it's getting farther away it's like what's the point it's like so 5000 years ago you know what i'm saying nobody sacrifices people anymore man we we've got evolution we've got computers We've got fire. We're amazing. We're amazing. We give everything to God. We give everything to the quasi-amniotic envelope that's been insinuated like a solution into our lives and bodies, extracting all of our lives into a fraudulent patina that belies the depths of malignancy that lay in everything that we do as a species. Completely fake. There's nothing that isn't fake. All fake. All fake. 
You don't even know the religion that's in this. Look, he's got a dress on, an apron. Yeah, it's amazing what you can do. I'm pretty sure this guy's a girl, his body type. And he's played as a girl. He's played as a pretty, pretty weird looking man. Same with this guy, Angus T. Jones. And then this guy, I don't know, he's got that jaw, that fucking impossible jaw. I don't know. I can't prove it. There are channels that do that type of thing, but look into the details. I just look at people's hands. The fingers don't lie, but what I do notice is how often they hide their fingers. So even if you can't see the fingers, you watch people. I was watching uh, Tracy Pollan and Michael J. Fox in some episode from Spin City, and it was amazing. They were kissing, and it's amazing. Even when their hands were hanging down at their sides, one finger was like this, you know, and they're always hiding their fingers, always hiding their fingers. Watch it continually. It's not proof of anything necessarily, but it's very suspicious that they hide their fingers all the time. With some early interviews of Sylvester Stallone, again, he hides his fingers. I guess their fingers must be very private. They're willing to give up everything else, but not their fingers. So my question to everyone is, what is so private about people's fingers that in movies and stuff you never get to see their hands like this, which would show that I'm a man? But if, that, if those fingers were held by a woman, by a woman, chances are 98% or higher, that's a, that's a man, not a woman, by birth. And uh, one of the things that are great about the lying of our society and the conditioning of our society, it would probably take most people a little bit of effort to figure out why that's even a problem. Mm. Or even putting, why would you put any effort to thinking about what a transgender global religion What's so wrong with that? What's so wrong with children watching thousands, tens of thousands of hours of TV and seeing people and authorities in front of them that were born the opposite gender that they are presenting themselves as? Like Jordan Peterson, for instance. If that guy wasn't fucking born a girl, I'll eat my own testicles. Oh, it's all so important, isn't it? Oh, it's so important about the pronouns and the gender. It's all so important about the tribunals. It's so important, isn't it? It's all so important, people. Jordan Peterson is all so important. He looks important. He talks important. That liberal agenda looks pretty bad. It doesn't matter. It's all gibberish going into the brain. Everything, all the debates on TV, it's just gibberish. It adds up to nothing. It adds up to nothing. Does anyone even know what an actual debate would look like? An actual debate where the prerequisites were that were not, that everyone involved has to give up their frontal cortex? Show me one, just one wise man or wise woman on television anywhere Speaking in a way that befits a man or a woman. <laughs> Just show me one. If anyone can show me one fucking person, anywhere in all the media, ever, anywhere, I don't care what language, translate it for me. Show me someone speaking any fucking sense whatsoever. Show me fucking, show me an actual person talking. An actual person who has an acquaintance with life on earth. Show me what they, I want to know what they fucking sound like. Because otherwise I have to fucking imagine. 